fifth was almost five, and it wasn't like Zer to be asleep in all of Zer bodies. Z wasn't a baby anymore. Z was old enough for school, old enough to walk all alone across the habitation, down the spoke to the great and buzzing center of Fu. But Z had been wound up with excitement for days, practically dancing around the house. Father Missus had laughed. Father Smistria had shooed her out of the supper garden. Father Frill had taken her to the bathing room to swim back and forth, back and forth, to calm Zer down. Just before supper, Z finally collapsed, twice, in the atrium, and curled up on the tiered balcony. Father Arevio and Father Squall had carried Zer and those two bodies back to Zer room. Z had managed to stay awake in Zer third body through most of supper, blinking hugely, breathing in through Zer nose and trying to sit up straight as waves of deep blue slumber from Zer two sleeping brains washed through Zer. By supper's end, Z couldn't stand up any longer, and Father Squell carried Zer last body to bed. Muddy dreams of sitting on a wooden floor in a long hall, of Zer name being called, of realizing Z hadn't worn Zer gowns after all, but was somehow humiliatingly dressed in Father Frill's golden bells instead. The other children laughed at Zer, and dizziness, and suddenly, surreally, the hall being full of flutterbys, their translucent wings fluttering, their projection surfaces glittering. Then someone was stroking Fifth's eyebrow, gently. Z tried to nestle further down into the blankets, but the someone started gently pulling on Zer earlobe. Z opens her eyes, and it was Father Squell. Good morning, little cubble hedge, B said. You have a big day today. Father Squell was slim and rosy-skinned and smelled like soap and flowers. Fift crawled into Squell's lap and flung her arms around them and pressed her nose between her bosoms. B was dressed in glittery red fabric, soft and slippery under Fift's fingers. Squell was bald with coppery metal spikes extruding from the skin of her scalp. Sometimes Father Frill teased her about the spikes, which weren't fashionable anymore. And sometimes that made Father Squell storm out of the room because V was a little vain. Father Squell had never been much of a fighter, the other father said. But V had a body in the asteroids, and that was something amazing. Squell reached over, Fift still in her lap, and started stroking the eyebrow of another of Fift's bodies. Fift sneezed in that body and then sneezed in the other two. That was funny, and Z started to giggle. Now Z was all awake. Up, little cubble hedge, Squell said. Up. Fift crawled out of bed, careful not to crawl over herself. It always made her a little restless to be all together, all three bodies in the same room. That wasn't good. It was because their somatic integration wasn't totally successful, which is why he kept having to see pedagogical expert Nim Morlasic Foundelli of Name Registry Pneumatic Lands 12. Pedagogical expert Nim Morlasic Foundelli had put an awful nag agent in Fifth's mind to tell her to look herself in the eye and play in a coordinated manner and do the exercises. It was nagging now, but Fifth ignored it. Z looked under the bed for her gowns. They weren't there. Fift closed her eyes. Z wasn't so good at using the feed with them open yet, and looked all over the house. The gowns weren't in the balcony, or the atrium, or the small mat room, or the breakfast room. Fathers Arevio, Smistria, Frill, and another of Father Squell's bodies were in the breakfast room, already eating. Father Missisk was arguing with the kitchen. Where are my gowns? Fift asked her agents, but the agents didn't say anything. Maybe Z was doing it wrong somehow. Father Squell, Z said, opening her eyes. I can't find my gowns and my agents can't either. I composted your gowns. They were old, Squell said. Go down to the bathing room and get washed. I'll make you some new clothes. Fifth's hearts began to pound. The gowns weren't old. They only came out of the oven a week ago.